If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, January 24th, 2013. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings, and today in the Finis Monitor, we'll, we will be joined by Eric Shanto. After his testicular cancer diagnosis in 2008, Shanto became very much involved in Livestrong, the organization that focuses on supporting the needs of cancer survivors around the world. As you may know, Lance Armstrong was the founder of Livestrong, and Shanto spent a lot of time working with Armstrong as part of the Livestrong Foundation. And Eric joins us now from Los Angeles. Eric, welcome to the show. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Well, as I said in the introduction, you're a big part of Livestrong over the years since your cancer diagnosis. Tell me specifically what your involvement has been through the years. Well, I got involved with Livestrong literally the day I was diagnosed, and, and most people don't know the story, but about two hours uh, after I was diagnosed, I left the doctor's office, and because this was so close to Olympic trials, you know, I'm have to practice that day. So I call my coaches, Eddie and Chris, and, and go into their office and um, I tell them or try to tell them that I have cancer. I mean, I don't even get the words out before I'm in tears. And, um, you know, after I tell them the situation, Chris gets on the phone with, uh, with Doug Ullman um, through a couple phone calls who Doug is the CEO at Livestrong and um, starts getting some information for me because at this point, you know, my whole life has come crumbling down around me. And, uh, and, and he says, you know, after you get done with swimming, Doug's going to call you. He's going to put you in touch with some of the best doctors for testicular cancer. And within two or three hours after uh, practice and, and kind of into the evening that night, I had gotten calls from all these top doctors. Everybody knew about my situation. So that was really how I was introduced to the foundation. I mean, it was just immediate support and very quick knowledge, which is what I needed going into trials. So, you know, that whole summer, I got to know more and more people at the foundation and what it was all about because they just gave me and my family unconditional support going through what I did in 2008. And uh, are you still actively involved with the foundation? So I've been actively involved with the foundation ever since and have just gotten more and more involved every year. Um, you know, after my fight, they got involved with my dad's fight and, and helped him with his journey through cancer and, and getting him more opinions about his situation and, and reassuring him that, and, and our family that we were doing everything we possibly could. And in 2010, you know, I started uh, the swimming event that I host in Atlanta. And a lot of people have, have heard about it and a lot of people have attended. Last year, we had about 1,500 people at the event. Um, a lot of my Olympic teammates have shown their support by coming out to attend. So I've really been involved um, very consistently and in a big way for the past four and a half years. And it's, it's kind of interesting to me about Livestrong that it's really mostly seems to be about helping people deal with cancer and, mo and not so much about, you know, trying to find a cure. Is that, is that an accurate description of it? Yeah, that's a very accurate description. And that's actually a big misconception that uh, people have had, especially in the past week or so, with all the articles that have come out. Um, you know, when people hear about nonprofit charities for cancer, they, they immediately think of cancer research. And, and that's kind of unfortunate because cancer research is, is kind of a small, uh, it's a small entity in, in the whole global fight against cancer. It's very important, but at the same time, cancer research is very, very expensive. And, you know, what people have to understand is that Livestrong started out funding cancer research. And then in the early 2000s, about 10 years ago, they made a big shift after sitting down with some of their uh, other nonprofits who fight cancer and said, how can we, you know, be more effective in the fight? And, and you know, making a comparison to someone like the American Cancer Society, Livestrong's revenue last year was $48 million dollars. The American Cancer Society's was $934 million. And when you're talking about cancer research, you can spend tens of millions of dollars donating to, to that cause and it's still just a drop in the bucket. 
So Livestrong had to go back and reevaluate how they could actually make an impact on the fight against cancer, and they were able to do that by focusing on what's called survivorship. And most people don't understand what survivorship is, and, and really, in a general sense, that's helping people right now who are actually going through cancer. It's the people that have been diagnosed today and who will get diagnosed tomorrow. Um, cancer research can take sometimes 15 to 20 years to actually feel the effects of what you're donating to. So the foundation really shifted their support and their, and their focus to people who are actually going through it right now. And that's really what their, their programs and services are focused on, and that's what I'm focused on. And, and as you said, in the past week or so, Livestrong has been in the public eye, especially surrounding all the news about Lance Armstrong and his news of doping. As that was all beginning to develop, what were your feelings surrounding um, Lance's, I guess, confession? You know, I, I have over the past couple months with the, the coming out of the USADA report and then Lance stepping down and then eventually stepping away from the foundation, I was able to keep a pretty good focus. And then the interview with him and Oprah aired on Thursday and Friday. And as I'm sitting there watching it, um, I, I was shaking with anger. I mean, I, I was so upset and so disappointed, but I was just so angry because... I really had to step back and think about it from an athlete perspective. And I've been in the USADA doping pool for now 14 years. You know, I, I've been in, in that in international and national out of competition drug testing pool since I was 15 years old. And just hearing how there was a complete and total disregard for that was really hard because it's something that I believe in and I rely on when I step up at whether it's a Grand Prix meet or a Nationals or an Olympic Games, that you know, the seven guys around me are all abiding by the same rules that I am, and it's a level playing field. And that's, that's the only way that I'm able to believe in that, is that other people do too. And it was just so hard to, to hear that it was just totally disregarded and, and just totally overlooked. Um, and so it was hard, and I, and I was very angry about it. So, you know, this was a time that's that was hard to watch and and hard to be a part of but i had to go back and realize that again what i do and what everyone else that supports me does is about the mission and not about the man and, and that's really where you have to separate the two yeah and probably as you were watching it i mean you you interacted with lance over the years and everything did it take a personal toll on on you knowing that you know this had all transpired i mean i've, I've had some personal interactions with lance but but you know that's about as far as it has gone. Um, more than anything else, it is anger towards the athlete standpoint. You know, it's it's it, it affected um, the athlete in me and the Olympian in me, not the cancer survivor. Um, and it is unfortunate in any sporting arena when you hear about a story like this, where you know an entire group and, and, and generation of athletes was exposed to something like this. I mean, that's just hard to hear about. And it just, it, it makes me sad for the sport of cycling. And it also makes me realize that I'm fortunate to be in a sport where, you know, we don't have that cloud hanging over our heads. I, I'm really proud to say that I think swimming is a, is a pretty clean sport from top to bottom. Yeah, it is probably an interesting perspective to watch it as a swimmer, knowing that you know, over over history, I mean, if you take maybe the East Germans in the 70s and the Chinese in the 90s, you put those aside. I mean, it's been very few doping scandals going on, and here we you're you're watching someone in a sport where it's pretty much looking like almost everybody was doing it. Yeah, and and every sport goes through their time and their generation. You know, I mean, baseball's kind of in the midst of of the same thing, and and fortunately, I've come at, at a time when when swimming hasn't had to deal with that and we haven't had to have uh, an issue with you know a big organized doping scandal like we did with the East Germans and, and, uh, and those generations back then. Well while this was all going on did you ever kind of doubt your association with Livestrong even after Lance had distanced himself from it? Sure I, I, I think there there is definitely some doubt that creeps into your head you know you, you question especially as an athlete I mean again I, I I keep going back to the athlete side of me, you know, it is how am I going to look going to people and asking them to support my event 
as an athlete when, you know, the athlete who founded it was doping. Um, but again, you have to go back and separate the man and the mission. And the mission and the foundation's goal and what they try to do is so much bigger than any one person. And that's what you have to keep the focus on. And that focus has been hard to keep, you know, the past week and week and a half. Uh, it hasn't been easy. But, you know, when, uh, when I go back and think about what I've been through in my life and my career, the things that were hard to get through only made me a stronger person on the other side. So, you know, I, I know the foundation is going to get through this, and I know they're going to come out uh, on the other side a, a stronger foundation with an even more focused mission on, on, people, on helping people with cancer. Well, specifically, how do you think Livestrong is going to be able to move on from this? Well, I, I think it's, it's a situation where they really have to kind of corral their supporters and make them understand all the details and help people understand that, listen, this is who we are, this is who we've always been, and this is what we do. And I think they've done a great job of doing that. I mean, the supporters, the, uh, the Nikes of the world, uh, their corporate partners and their corporate sponsors are all sticking with them. And I think that speaks tremendously to how they've handled this situation. You know, Livestrong has been upfront about everything. I think they've been very honest about everything. Uh, you know, as soon as they learned about the USADA report and about all of the details of the situation, uh, that's when they took action against Lance. And, and Lance even referred to that in the interview. I mean, it was that he said that was probably one of his hardest moments when he was essentially asked to leave the foundation because that's when people found out the truth. So, you know, I think they've handled this a very difficult situation. I think they've handled it as, as best as they possibly could have, and that's going to help them get through it and, and maintain and also grow their supporters. I'm sure probably in the, in the near future when you're at another Live Strong event, somebody's probably going to come up to you and, and, and say, you know, they want to support Live Strong. They really want to get behind the cause and everything. But because of all this that's gone on, they have a hard time getting past the fact that it was founded by an athlete who's doping. What would you say to someone like that? I would say that, you know, if Lance isn't someone you can get behind, then get behind me. Because the story that I told you earlier where literally I got – diagnosed and then two hours later was involved with Livestrong, that's how they operate. They are open for business right now. They want to help people right now, and they're willing to help people right now. And that help is what saved my swimming career in 2008 and then really inspired me to continue going on for the next four years when I was able to accomplish all that I really did. So there's, again, there's so many more stories out there. And there's millions of people that Livestrong has affected and touched, and those are the, the stories and the people that they can get behind and support. As often happens, some of our interviews here on the Morning Swim Show run a little longer than expected. That was the case with my conversation with Eric Shanto, so we're going to end today's episode at this point and bring you part two of my interview with Eric on tomorrow's edition of the Morning Swim Show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.